If you could have only one bike to rule them all, what would it be? If you ask me, I would tell you it's the humble trail bike. Now before you start saying that riding your enduro or downhill bike at your local bike park will always beat the trail bike, you're right. But this video is geared towards the rider who can only have one bike to ride everything. There is a reason there are bikes specifically made for shuttled bike parks. Because you don't have to pedal back up. Now, before I continue, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment about your thoughts on this video. I'd uh, love to hear what you guys think. Now let's get back to it. Number one, you can ride on almost every trail. Sure, on the absolute gnarliest trail, your 130 mil tr uh, trail bike might start to struggle, especially at high speed. However, a skilled rider could muscle his way down much harder trails than you think. Just look at Sam Pilgrim, who has ridden Whistler Bike Park recently with a $200 bike from Walmart. You may need to use a little bit more finesse and be smarter about your lines, but don't be afraid to point that trail bike down the mountain and let it rip. This also counts for going uphill as well. Having a slightly chunkier tires, you'll have more grip compared to an XC bike. And while the XC bike might take the KOM, at least you aren't pedaling up a downhill bike. Number two, the weight. Trail bikes always play on the line between downhill speeders and something a bit more poppy. They need to be relatively light so you don't start to cry every time the trail starts to point up. And with just enough weight to keep the wheels on the ground when it gets rough, if the weight gets too light, you really start to notice as you begin to take flight and jump around the trails uncontrollably. And when it comes to climbs, having a few extra pounds you don't have to carry around will make life so much better. There's no doubt that the XC bike will be much lighter compared to the other models. But that lighter weight can sometimes make you feel a bit more sketchy when it's time to go back down the mountain. So if you want a true jack of all trades but a master of none, it's got to be the trail bike. Number three, affordability is one of the biggest points of interest when looking for a new bike for any rider. So when you're looking for the most bang for your buck, you don't need to look much further than your trail bike. Comparing many of the trail bikes against the enduro bikes, it's no doubt you'll be able to save some money going with a tried and true trail bike. The reason is because an enduro bike, you typically need beefier parts with greater adjustability while trying to keep the weight down. This will naturally raise the price on parts that get mounted on the enduro frames. And because of this, you'll find more people buying the trail bike, which ultimately leads to manufacturers to make more variety parts for your trail bike versus an enduro or downhill because you have a bigger market in the trail bikes. Look at the XC side. You want the lightest possible part possible and for this spec alone you can expect to pay a premium for it. The trail bike still needs high performing parts but it doesn't need to be featherweight or indestructible, making for a perfect budget friendly bike. Number four, the livability. Hear me out, trail bikes are so easy to carry around, with enduro bikes having bolted through axles and downhill bikes having triple crown fork preventing you from turning your handlebars 90 degrees, storing and transporting these bikes can require extra time planning, and even frustration. While the trail bike is lighter, it has also quick release through axles in the front and the back. It's very easy to get the bike in and out of storage or even your vehicles to shred the trails. Number five, the simple standards. If there's one thing about watching the mountain bike market, there seems to always be new parts and products that create new standards like the Super Boost found on downhill bikes. With the wider hubs, you now need to adjust other parts to match the chain line. Trail bikes, on the other hand, have maintained a simpler standard among the frames and geometry, preventing you from needing to upgrade your bike every year to keep up with the ever-changing market you find in the enduro and downhill bikes. And because of this, you can almost add this point to number four, the livability. They are simply easier to live with. So there you have it, guys. Five reasons why I believe the trail bike wins the contest when you can only have one bike in your arsenal to ride any trail around you. What do you guys think? Are there other features that I missed that make the trail bike the best all around bike? I'd love to hear about it in the comments.